I find it very interesting how the word community is used, especially when it comes to the online world. When I first started making videos, I had no desire to create any sort of community. And I think that's because I knew in my heart that you really can't create community online. It's not real. If you just look at the world of MBTI, for example, I mean, I only found out about this maybe three years ago. And in that very short period of time, people who created content based around MBTI have come and gone. People who were making videos three years ago are no longer making videos now. If you read the comment sections, new names are popping up all the time. People come and go. You don't find much longevity in both the video creations and the comment sections. And if you ask me, that's not real community. Real community has longevity. Real community is made up of the same people living life together over a long stretch of time. Every time I hear someone, especially in this MBTI world, use the word community, it just it kind of makes me laugh in a way because I can tell they're trying to create something but they don't know how to create it or they're trying to build it under a false premise. What is real community anyway? I mean a real community exists of many different types of individuals all coming together for the greater good. So they all work together for a common goal for a common purpose. So you have people coming together that have different strengths, different abilities that they've developed through skills that they've learned, and they all contribute in order to survive. And that's what community is. And I don't think this can exist online because what you see, especially in this MBTI thing, it was a bunch of people who are mostly made up of the same type or similar types. And I understand that because, you know, I would say probably introverts gravitate more to the internet in general. Um, people who are introspective gravitate more to typology sort of videos. You see that more, and I understand that. But... I'm not criticizing it, I'm just saying it makes my point that there is no community when you have a group of people that are basically very similar. So I, I think for that reason alone, you can't call any of this community because it's just made up of a lot of the same sorts of people. You know, a real community is made up of sensors and intuitives, extroverts and introverts, you know, people who have skills and craftsmanship and people who have skills in counseling and people who have skills in encouraging and you know you could just go on and on with the list you know that's a real community and that's not found online and that's easy to see because we don't see many channels in MBTI that are created by sensor types and we don't see many people like that in the comment sections. And the videos that do get made about those sorts of types don't get many views. So it kind of tells you who's watching and who makes up the so-called community because it's not all the 16 types represented. One of the big things that I think exists in real community that doesn't exist online is a word that a lot of people find difficult to acknowledge and to accept. And that's accountability. In real life, in real relationships, there's a level of accountability. Without accountability in life, you can't grow as a person. And a lot of people are offended by this, and a lot of people find it to be abrasive. But when you have relationships with somebody of an intimate nature, there should be accountability. In other words, there should be freedom both ways 
in calling one another out for behaviors that you see that are detrimental to a person's growth. And I think the key word here is love because it's done in love. You know, it's not just one person looking to attack another. It's really done from love, from a desire to want to see the other person succeed in life. A desire to want to see them grow. And I think that online, there's a problem with accountability. And accountability needs to exist in real communities. And without it, it's like someone spinning their wheels. You know, it's like a vehicle that never goes anywhere or a plane that never gets off the ground. That's what it is. Because it can't grow. So if you're calling something a community online where there's no accountability, well, there will be no growth there. All it turns into is a big validation circle where everyone is constantly stroking other people's egos from some false sense of supporting one another when it's actually very harmful because it doesn't encourage growth. I mean, we need to grow as human beings. I mean, if we stayed babies forever, if we tried to keep ourselves in a baby state, we would all agree that that would be harmful to us. But yet we do these sorts of things online and we want to criticize those who say we shouldn't do that. And this is what I see online. I've been seeing a lot of videos lately. And again, I'm not criticizing people who make these videos, but you know, there is a push for, you know, I want to create a place that's safe for all of us. And I understand that. And this is the thing. I can see both sides. I understand that you don't want to allow an idiot or someone who's nasty to make comments that are just mean-spirited in general, that really are not offered in any sort of helpful way. I mean, I understand that. But I think we can go too far with this because we want to shut down any and all criticism. And that's not helpful. You know, an example I found that people seem to be very touchy about is questioning someone's type. I think as long as it's done respectfully, I don't see why that's a problem. And I think the problem lies in handling the accountability. Because I see that there are people out there who want to provide that, but then they're shut down and they're not allowed to do so. Because I think in our desire to create safe spaces, we end up going too far with it and we end up shutting down any and all criticism. And that's not helpful. You know, I don't have a problem with people who want to question someone's type, as long as it's done respectfully. Truth be told, there are a lot of people out there that are mistyped and that are making videos claiming to be a certain type and they're not. And how's this good for them? You know, I think when someone comes along and says, I don't think you're, you've typed yourself correctly and I see the response that they're met with and it's usually a hostile one. The person is very offended that someone would dare criticize who they say they are. And like I said, I can understand if it's done in a mean-spirited way, but a lot of the comments that I've seen aren't mean-spirited. They're really done from a sincere, genuine desire to help the other person. It's interesting because usually the ones who do respond by getting offended, it kind of gives them away, you know, that they are holding on too close to this label, this identity of some kind of type. You know, I've seen people who were questioned on their type and kind of handle it the right way. And that just tells me something about that person, you know, that they're not so latched on to this particular type. So I think accountability is a problem because we just don't like criticism. It stings and a lot of times it's automatically rejected. There's another aspect to this too. For me, you know, as an INFJ type, I used to desire to belong to a community, you know, in a traditional sense, but that was when I didn't know myself. And, you know, there's so many things I want to say about all this, and there's so much that's so intertwined. I mean, it has to do with loneliness and maturity and all of these things, knowing yourself. And uh, 
I'd like to speak about it, but it's so much that's interconnected. So for me, I found that, you know, when I was lonely, I was seeking community in the traditional sense, you know, that I wanted to be involved with a large group of people and find my place in that. But, you know, once I met myself, and I think that's the key to banishing loneliness, and I'd love to talk about that sometime, but once I met myself, once I finally understood myself and how I was wired and my gifts, my abilities, my strengths, then I kind of started seeing my place within a community and it is different you know it's not a traditional role and I'm okay with that you know I always think about a community being if you think of a town you know, all the people living in town you know I'm I would be the person that lives on the outskirts of town kind of off by myself and I'm content with that you know people could consult me for things I mean, that's kind of my role. And it's funny because that's sort of how my role is even now within my sibling unit. I have uh, three other siblings and they all live within 30 minutes of each other. And uh, I live about four hours away from all of them. So <laughs> I'm kind of like on the outskirts of them even. But they do consult me and I kind of am the glue that kind of keeps us all together. So within that small little family community, I do have that role of living on the outskirts. I think for an INFJ type, living in a community in a traditional sense is problematic because you can't help people when you are caught up in all of their everyday lives. You know, I don't think that in order to help people on a grander scale, I think you kind of have to be detached. And if you think of a counselor... You know, a counselor can't get closely involved or can't have feelings for or can't get, you know, wrapped up in someone else and still be able to help them. I mean, you have to be kind of impersonal in a way. That doesn't mean you don't care, but you have to remove yourself in a personal way from situations in order to be effective. And I think that for me, having just a very few close intimate relationships in my life that's what I need for me but in general I don't need a big circle of people I tried that in the past and it didn't work and of course I didn't understand at the time why I was having such angst all the time and it's just because I think when I was amongst all the people I was studying them and they thought that I was befriending them and then it ended up just being way too many people to try to maintain relationships with. And that's not how I made. Now, I'm not wired like that. I'm not wired to have large groups of people in my life on a day-to-day -day basis. That's just not who I am. And once I realized that, then things started getting a lot easier for me. So for me, you know, my role in the community is on the outskirts. You know, I'm outside of the box in a way. I'm still within the community. I still have a role in the community, but I'm on the outskirts. That's how I see myself. So I guess for me, even here in this place, you know, I never desire to create community because I know it's just an illusion. People want to think, oh, I'm building a community on my channel, but it's not like that. The person who makes the videos is always the one, you know, kind of like the king or queen of the community. And it's interesting watching some of these channels spring up and catchphrases that are being used and then everyone uses the catchphrase. I mean, it's so predictable, I guess. And it's really not a community. It's this one person. It revolves around one person. Then everyone else is sort of there to build up that person. I find the whole thing very bizarre, to be honest. But it's still fascinating to me because it's what I love, studying people and the behavior of the hive. I've never desired community. I do value comments that are valuable. I've gotten some wonderful comments here that have inspired me and encouraged me, well, have encouraged further thought within me. And I do value that, but I have no desire to set up a kind of space where people can come together and feel understood. That's just not going to happen here. I think people are looking for understanding, but they're 
definition of understanding is a little misguided. They just want to relate. They want to relate to someone. And I see that all the time. This is so relatable. Oh, I relate to this. You know, when do you get to the point when you stop relating and you grow up? I mean, relating is a good thing. You know, that's how babies kind of start out in life, don't they? They relate to one another. They stare at each other. And they try to see, you know, how am I like this other baby? But relating is good in the beginning stages. But there gets to be a point where you have to take it and do something with it. You have to grow. You can't just relate to people all the time. And I've never looked to be relatable here. If it is, if I am, that's great. But, you know, I'm speaking from my own experience. And I don't want people to necessarily relate to me. Although I realize, you know, that has its place. But I want people to hear me and take it and apply it to their lives and do something with it. I mean, I'm all about growth as a human being. I've talked about this on my channel. You know, living a stagnant life. It's death. Stagnation is death. And I think that's why so many of these channels just die, because they stagnate. I mean, how many times can you read the same comments over and over? You know, it never goes anywhere. It's the same thing. Validation, encouragement. And, you know, I, I'm not opposed to these things, but it just, it's always within the realm of safety, you know? can't criticize you can't offer something a little bit more meaty you know it has to be all surface level and it has to be shallow and that's just stagnation that's going to lead to death and I think that you know channels in this MBTI world that just kind of focus on that you know they're never going to go anywhere and I don't think anyone is going to actually grow or learn anything, which is a shame because what's the point of learning about typology if not to learn more about yourself and others? I mean, people just want to take a deep dive in the shallow pool and they can't do it. They just want to talk about so much just ad nauseum and they never do something with it. You know, for an INFJ, living in that community, living in that town... And just sitting day after day with all the other people, you know, that's going to cause you to stagnate. You need to get outside of the community and start fulfilling your role. Start living the way you were wired. And that takes some maturity to understand that. And, you know, I confess I don't have all the answers. I think in some way I'm doing it here. You know, I'm kind of living on the outside here. I think a lot of what I have to say is hard to understand because it is coming from a place of maturity. I've not made any secret about the fact that I am older. I'm older than most of the people making videos in this particular subject area. But, you know, I think that you need to grow up and realize your place is not in the community. And I don't mean that from a harsh sense because, you know, I went through it too. Like, I had to live there myself to realize I didn't belong there. And I think for some of you who are in younger seasons of life, you have to live there as well. Because I think it'll help you if you live there to see that you don't belong. Because so much of life is about experience. How do you know if you don't experience it? And so I think you need to live there and experience what it's like to finally understand that about yourself. To know that you don't belong there. And then when you finally realize that, there's a contentment in it. You know, it's like, wow, I finally understand who I am. And I'm content living on the outside. I'm content living on the outskirts. Because I don't belong there. And it's not a lonely place. I'm not lonely. I am very content in the way that I live my life. Those days are behind me. And it's a great feeling to know who you are and to live out your life based on your strengths as a person. So I just wanted to express my thoughts about this whole word community. I mean, I could talk about it a lot more because there is a lot to say about community. I mean, I did make some videos earlier last year about understanding your place in the hive. And if you haven't listened to those I talk about this very subject in three parts. You know, I address why some types are rare and some types are common, and I know that people have trouble with those words, but I do not, because it makes perfectly good sense, makes logical sense, and I explained my position on that in those three videos. 
but you can listen to those because I think it will help shed some light on our place in the world, everyone's place in the world. Personally, that's why I think this typology thing is such a great thing. You know, my idealistic side knows what it could be. And when I look online and I see what it is, it's sad, you know? I mean, it's sad because of human nature. It's not unexpected or it's not surprising because I know how human beings can be, but you know, I still have hope that it can be used for good. And if you haven't considered these things before, then I'd love to hear your thoughts because I think it's a good discussion to have. It's a worthwhile discussion to have. It's a discussion that could actually get us somewhere.